Today we talk about the World Cup 2018, Halo Infinite, the new Halo game for Xbox One X. Also we talk about some left right wing politics, sugar and caffeine, I think it's bad, you shouldn't ingest it. Waking up with the sun, my first ever donation, the Supreme brand and how it's really fucking shit and also terrible LA fashion. I'm Johnny Massacre and this is the Johnny Massacre Show! <laughs> So, the World Cup is on. A lot of people I spoke to about it don't actually know what it is. I'm recently working with this incredibly talented artist called Leo Gan. She just animated a music video for me. Check it out. If I was loaded, I'd live my life like a magazine, not paper. Clip shooting stars through my TV screen. Boom. Ones and zeros make heroes mad. Can they trip? People to think I wasn't really who I am. That I didn't have a psychological problem. Shit. My shrink told me not to tell anyone because they won't understand. Shit. I guess being famous is a bad idea then. Yeah. It's a shame cause my brain is wide to think like a million imaginary fans. You, These days I overthink things. Never join my music because I'm sinking. I need to take enough pills until I'm dribbling That's sure to make me stop scribbling Just bash it with the fucking hammer Until I'm slithering Like a snake broken tail Hissing in Hell's Kitchen Never trust a shrink Cause if you got better They couldn't make a living I got brain lock It's not me It's my OCD I didn't kill her It's not me It's my OCD I didn't mean to be an asshole. It's not me. It's my OCD. Hey girl, what? She, it wasn't me. No, it's my OCD. I got brain lock, 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 lock. So you can see Leo's very talented. She's she's got an amazing sense of humour and comedic timing with her editing. I absolutely love her. And I, 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 was, I was talking to her about the World Cup and she goes, oh, my dad's like watching it? And I was like, oh, you don't know about football, girl. So the World Cup, if you're not really familiar with it, it's soccer, as Americans would say, soccer. When it's not fucking soccer, it's football, mate. We fucking invented it. I'm British, right? English people invented it. Football, and it's called football, not soccer, right? Not soccer, mate. So it's it's a game of where you kick a ball around a pitch, 11 versus 11, and you have to kick the ball, you have to get the ball in the net, and then you can score and win. And it's going on right now, and it's basically one of the biggest money-generating events in the world. The corporate sponsorship for World Cup generates so much money, the corporation was incredibly corrupt for years because it kind of seems to operate independently of the courts you know you can assault each other on a football pitch and intentionally break someone's leg but not go to jail from it which is quite crazy so it was really corrupt there was a lot of scandal for many years and eventually the the corrupt aging hierarchy was gotten rid of and are now in trouble with the american authorities because of some money laundering when the world cup was held there and so it's still blatantly corrupt, but the point is it generates a shitload of money. So it's a serious major event. And the reason I think the World Cup is so fucking popular is because of its absence. It's only every four years. And I think that absence increases people's admiration and respect for you. And if they already have a good memory of you, or in this case, the World Cup, when you come back, it's like a phoenix rising from the ashes and your return is almost godlike. And so, yeah, the World Cup's on. I watched a few games. I live in Japan, so the times are quite spread out. It's being hosted in Russia, so games can start at 7 p.m., 9 p.m., midnight, 1 p.m., just ranging through the spectrum of hours until about 3 a.m. I wake up with the sun. At the moment, the sun comes up at about 4.45. So I'm waking up at 4.45 to catch the second half of these games. 
Um, I watched one game, which was Portugal versus Spain. They are rivals because they're next to each other. I really hate the player known as Ronaldo because he looks like a mutant chipmunk and he doesn't have a neck. It's as if he looks like a bronzed mannequin that was created on a production line. However, somewhere during the process where he was being constructed, they forgot to put a neck on him and they just jammed his head into his shoulders. Anyways, here is me watching Ronaldo with the game drawn at 2-2 in the dying embers of the match. Now the pouting, preening tosser. Let's hope this goes into the wall, you stupid fuck. Oh no. And yes, Ronaldo fucking scored, so what a cunt, but he always does score, so you have to respect him for his football. There's nothing else to respect him about. Moving on from the World Cup, Halo 6. Halo is my favourite game of all time. It is the game that's synonymous with the Microsoft and Xbox brand. I had the first Halo. It was amazing. Halo 2 revolutionised multiplayer. It was the first game where they put in shields that degrade, but if you hide behind a wall, the shield, rechar the shield recharges, Excuse me, and your health is not affected. And it pioneered that gameplay dynamic in video games. It also pioneered many other things, the sound effects and everything, the, the game design, the level design, the AI. Uh, changed the the industry. Halo two, Halo three was the best game of all time in my opinion. It's one of the most elegant, uh, playable pieces of art ever created. Halo four was shit because it went to a new developer from Bungie to three four three. However, with Halo five, three four three appeared to listen to some of the criticism and negative feedback and made the game more like the original Halos, which was pretty damn good. And I still play it, but not perfect. But now they got the formula right. You just know Halo six is going to be amazing and they announced it. It is known as Halo Infinite. So let's watch the trailer now, shall we? Those are pretty fucking amazing. Look at those graphics, man. to be 60 frames a second. Halo 5 was 60 frames a second. Yeah, this is running at 60. Absolutely. We can only have the YouTubes. That looks like his Halo 3 armor I was reading. And I like the way they've gone back to a pure rubber look. I mean, look at the fucking graphics, man. Just awesome. Brilliant. So there's not really too much that can be gleaned from that. I uh, really wanted to see some multiplayer and there's no information other than that trailer. So it's been three years since the last Halo and I think the game's on pretty much a three year cycle, which is very interesting because other major IPs like Call of Duty, they just churn them out with different de developers and Microsoft w might be a company that would do that, but. It's good to see they're taking their time with it. I need a fucking release date, man. Um, it's not a good sign that it's just such a small piece of footage after a three year wait. It kind of suggests to me that it might be coming next year, but fuck, man, I just can't wait for that game. Halo Infinite. Anyone else looking forward to that? I think the Halo fan base has dropped considerably. The online population is nowhere near what it was. Halo 3, they used to proudly display the online population every time you logged in, but since Halo 4 they haven't done that. So what is next on the agenda? Sugar and caffeine. I just wanna say that I think sugar and caffeine is really fucking bad for you, especially sugar. Sugar has no nutritional benefit. There's no reason to eat it. You can get energy from carbohydrates, which is converted into glycogen and glucose, which is then converted into energy in your body. 
after a hormone called insulin is secreted by your pancreas when you eat fruit and certain types of honey that don't spike your blood sugar too much and other other forms of food so there's no reason to eat sugar and it only has negative effects and people are so fucking addicted to sugar I gave up sugar completely about three months ago and I've been trying to give it up for about 12 fucking years I have taken the drug known as ecstasy before when I was younger and I've taken cocaine a few times and I've smoked a bit of marijuana I haven't done any drugs for about 12 13 years and I never will do again because I value my brain and I just love life I don't need any stimulants and I tell you what giving up sugar was harder than giving up well I was never addicted to those drugs but I was addicted to tobacco I was smoking from the age of about 11 until 29 so do the math that's about 18 years of smoking giving up sugar was harder than giving up smoking and I'm no stranger to addiction. I have been to a lot of Alcoholics Anonymous meetings and I've talked to a lot of people who've had alcohol problems and I have seen firsthand uh, close people to me become alcoholics and destroy their fucking lives through addiction. So I know all about addiction. I'm no stranger to it at all. I'm very sensitive to it. And I can tell you outright that sugar is the most addictive shit I've ever seen. And because it's trivialized and no one really talks about it and there are other worse things out there to kill you, like cigarettes, for example, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be having a discussion about sugar and its negative effects. Because if you look at the obesity fucking epidemic that's, that's world right, worldwide right now, it is fucking shocking. And since I've given up sugar, I sleep better. I've got way less... Um, anxiety I don't really feel anxious about anything anymore and I've got you know more energy and I just physically and mentally it's it's a world apart and I cannot understand how you can go into a shop and around the counter you have to go through a maze of chocolate just being sold to you on a point of sale it's just fucking mental and it's destroying the fucking world and I look around me and I I am I would like to say I'm free from from physical addiction. I, I, I don't eat sugar, I don't drink caffeine, and I barely drink alcohol. I'll drink it, I have a glass of whiskey once a month, or once every couple of months, um, just because of social pressure when I cave in. And so, without any of these addictions for the first time in my life, it's made me realize how, how we are fucking slaves. And when I look around, it's really sad. I see it fucking everywhere. People standing outside eating their chocolate bar for breakfast. They're eating something horrible or smoking or drinking. And I'm thinking, like, wow, the, the human condition is just savage and depressing. And what went wrong in humanity from when we were the first primitive Neanderthals until now? Is this a our destiny, just to be fallible creatures who have loads of problems, who cannot resist addiction and intoxicating ourselves to, to get away from our misery. What's wrong with us? I was in Starbucks, worst shop in the world, by the way, and the person next to me was going, shh, 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 on their fucking drink. It was coffee and sugar, trying to suck out the last bit of those two addictive substances. And I thought, this is fucking, this is mental. Starbucks is so popular, why do you think it's so popular? In the entranceway, full of fucking refined sugar, the worst shit you can eat, and coffee. Two things together. People say coffee's good, well, when they combine coffee with sugar, just look at it, look at the situation. That is just purely a business functioning on addiction. Alcohol, caffeine, sugar, big fucking business. If I made another business and had ridiculous capital, that's what I'd be fucking doing, because I have no morals, and I would be happy to poison the people, but I'm just, it doesn't mean I'm not looking at it and thinking it's, it's just insane what we're doing. And it's so hard for people to stop. How many people do you know who are dieting trying to give it up and they can't? Endless. Endless. We have a serious addiction to sugar and it's fucking, it's, it's, it's fucking terrible. And as I said, just because it's, it's not as degrading to society as drugs is, doesn't mean it shouldn't be high on the agenda. Because it's putting people in hospitals, it's making people fat, it's making, making people miserable, it's exacerbating people's mental problems. There's no doubt about it to me. Just my anecdotal evidence. What do you think about it? Hey, eat it. I, I am a liberal in that sense. I, I don't give a fuck what people do. And I think people should be free to do what they want with their bodies. But I'm just raising it because I'd like to discuss it and see what you think. Am I, am I being, am I overreacting? I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I really fucking would. Why else would I be here? All right. Next thing, waking up with the sun. I wake up with the sun these days and I've been making changes in my life, as you might 
already know by my rant about sugar and caffeine. Um, and I would always get out of bed about 2 p.m., 3 p.m. And I've been doing it my whole life as a creative. A lot of creatives can relate. We're very uh, active at night. But all I want to say is if you get up at the same time every day, your life will improve dramatically because I was listening to Jordan Peterson and he was saying how if you, if you do the routine things every day right, then that means you're spending a large percentage of your life taking care and pride in what you do. So people think waking up at a certain time, making breakfast, showering and what is, is just a routine, it's not that important. But if you actually um, accumulate how many hours a week you spend doing that, it's actually quite an important ritual. And so if you take pride in it and do it well, that's the, the, the building block for, for making a good life with other things you might want to do, whether it's chasing your dreams or, or, or starting new things and so on. And so getting up in the morning with the sun is probably one of the most significant things I've ever done in my life. Uh, it means I've got tons of time in the day. It means even if I don't sleep enough, I'll still wake up with the sun. And so I'm getting those hours in and it feels healthy and just mentally, physically, it's, it's fucking good. So I would really recommend it. Dr. Dre, one of my heroes, music producer, one of his lines is, wake up in the AM, compose a beat. Wake up in the AM, compose a beat. Uh. And uh, that's inspiration enough for me. So moving on again, I got my first ever donation. It was from Charlie uh, Herrera, I believe his name is. Sorry, it might not be Herrera. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to look it up because I cannot get this guy's name name wrong. Oh, yeah, Herrera. I was right. Charlie Eugene Herrera, like the name Eugene. So he donated. This was my reaction to my first ever donation. Dinosaur Junior. I saw them live at Fuji Rock, and I had no idea who they were, but they were fucking good. And my friend told me they're legendary. Oh my God! I got a ten dollar donation. Okay. There better be the animation to come up with that, otherwise I've just wasted his money. Wow, I have a fucking boner right now. Ah, I'm so excited. Shit. I'm so pumped. There you go. Fucking Blade Runner, it has come. Harrison Ford. Wasn't that worth it? Charlie, look how happy you made me. I fucking love you. Oh, you're going to get special treatment, mate. Why not follow up by signing up to my Patreon? Hey, then you get a free one-to-one 40-minute conversation every month. And you can ask me anything. We can talk politics, man, but for a price. So fucking happy because I spent a lot of time working out streaming. I still haven't got it cracked, but it is a fucking nightmare. It's one of the hardest things you can do. You sit down, you're ready to roll, and then there's all these problems with the frame rate and resolution and internet, and it's a fucking nightmare. I. The long story short, if you want to stream, you need a lot of capture cards. I have a few external video cameras, and if you want your computer to process it, I have the most powerful, fastest MacBook Pro in the fucking world. It cannot handle the, to, uh, an external camera to process it. You need a capture card. So, anyways, it's it's such a slog to live stream that when he finally tipped me, and also I got my my geeky donation message. I set that up via some some online application, Flash application, where when you donate a GIF appears, and in my case it was a Blade Runner Harrison Ford saying something. It, was, it all came together, it was great. So that really inspired me to keep going, so thank you so much. And hey, if you're liking this show and you want more, donate, because look, you know it's fucking good. There's loads of those cunts on YouTube who start and go, hey guys, da 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 da. Who wants to see that shit? Hey guys, hey guys, hey everyone. No, shut the fuck up. When you start your show, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, this is my name, and let's fucking go. That's how you do it. Learn from the best, Ben Shapiro, I'm looking at you. You don't want those fucking twats. They're fucking smashing it. You want someone who's, even if I'm not right all the time, you want someone who's all about reality. He's trying to be grounded in reality and say things as they really are, as opposed to having some weird political bias or agenda. That's what you want, people, right? I'm selling myself. So why not donate now? You can donate We're in the info box below. So check it out. My donation, actually, you can see it here. Boom! <laughs> no, come back. <sighs> so... This is my donation link, so please donate kindly, because if you want more of these videos, if you donate, you're gonna get more, 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 more. I'll never stop. Thank you. Okay, just quickly, I wanna talk about Supreme. So the Supreme logo, you know it's a big brand, Supreme, and I didn't get it, and I've seen it all over Tokyo. There's a second-hand store, and I went in there, and it's full of Supreme stuff on the first floor, so they've dedicated a whole floor of second-hand clothes to Supreme, and it's a really prestigious second-hand store. They have a lot of good stuff. On the second floor, they have things like Rick Owens and all the kind of top brands and shit. 
And I can't quite work it out. So one of uh, my uh, American friends was explaining it to me. Supreme is basically what everyone has. It's the main fucking brand. It's, it's, I, I get it now. It's, it's, in the, it's in the logo and the branding. So however they've fucking done it, they've turned this shitty logo into something amazing. And that is genius branding. So look at something like Marmite. Bing! So Marmite is a piece of shit. It's vegetable. Ve I need my vegetables today. It's a vegetable extract. It basically looks like brown doo-doo stains in a jar and it tastes like doo-doo stains. Not that I know what doo-doo stains taste like, but I do have a vivid imagination as an artist. And so how to sell this product? It was made into a seriously popular brand because they did a great branding campaign. They said, you either love it or you hate it. And they had, a, they had actors eating it and going, oh, that's horrible. And someone else would be like, oh, it's great. So everyone, it's like a challenge. They turn it into a challenge and everyone bought it to see if they liked it. And even if you didn't like it, people probably said they liked it just to kind of fit in with the Marmite crowd. And that is genius branding. And that's obviously what they've done to Supreme. Terrible logo, shitty red background, but it's amazing. And also the way they cross pollinate the brand, they don't try to lock it off selfishly. They let other brands use the Supreme logo. So it might even go on Nike or Adidas or whoever they're partnering up with or whoever, anything cool, they can put the Supreme logo on and people are gonna buy it. And so I just find it amazing that brand's popular because it, it comes across like some Andy fucking Warhol, like soup tin fucking iconic commercial design but it's aesthetically it looks like shit supreme and the clothes look like some kind of fucking default clothes on a playstation 2 game where you customize your character fuck that last thing i saw something online i'm a bit late now but coachella festival everyone talks about oh, coachella i'm gonna go there with like my my spice my weed you know that and, and like oh and like listen to 808 beats going boom did they all sound the same and like then I'm gonna get into a fight and a big bouncer is gonna knock me out and I'm gonna go back to my house but we don't have any trains so like do you drive? I'm a little bit uh, lit. I'm so lit everywhere. I shouldn't be driving. It's that kind of festival it seems like. And I saw some into, uh, uh, information online about the fashion at Coachella and holy crap. So look, let's pop this up on the screen. So on the left, we've got Miss Camel Toe who is kind of doing her best avatar impression. I would hit, I would smash. And the next guy, could you try to look any more like a fucking woman? I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. You are trying to stick your cock out as much as possible, so I think you need to sort that out with a skirt, mate. And then the last one, what in the actual hell? Those are some nice tits, but like, what? So like now, Westerners are wearing a hijab? Are you serious? Like that's become a fashion item because the last time I checked, that was like a symbol of oppression. Uh, I believe the Quran says, uh, and I quote, tell the believing men to lower their gaze and to be mindful of their chastity. This will be most conducive to their purity. Verify God is aware of all that they do and tell the believing woman to lower their gaze. Basically, woman, look at the floor, bitch, and to be mindful of their chastity. Remember, no one else can fuck you. You are my property translation and not to display their charms in public beyond what may decently be apparent thereof hence let them draw their head coverings over their bosoms look the bible also has shit like this you know you can't be selective with your evidence and say oh the quran is evil and the bible's not i think they're both just as fucked if you read them god is such a cunt in the bible but look you can see it you don't in the text from the Quran, it's all about sexual things and owning women and not, not showing her like it's your property, like hiding your car in the fucking garage so nobody steals it. And I mean, yeah, I mean, she might actually be Muslim, in which case, I'm sorry, but doesn't look like your typical Muslim because I think if, you, if you're a Muslim and you're even moderate, that would be pushing it, having those tits. But those tits are amazing. Uh, in Japanese, we might be thinking about something known as paizuri. Check it out. So, okay, ending on that note, I just want to read, uh, I, well, no, I've got a few questions, but look, no one's sending me fucking questions. I know you're out there checking it out. Send me questions now, this link. Do it right now. Send me a question for the next Johnny Massacre show. I will write your name, I'll put your picture, I'll even do a little piece about you and talk about who you are. I'll promote you. See, we, we're mutually beneficial. This is like a symbiosis, okay? So ask me a question, sorry, right now, and I'm gonna answer it next time. I do have a bunch of questions from Leo, intellectual, love her. Only 19, super fucking smart. Huge bright future. More than 15,000 YouTube subscribers. Subscribe now. And so she asked me a bunch of questions uh, because she's into what I'm doing and I'm super into what she's doing as well. And I will answer them, answer them next time, I promise Leo. But as for now, send me your questions. 
I'm Johnny Massacre, rapper, music producer and DJ living in Tokyo, Japan. Subscribe to my channel for more music videos, live performances, live streams, video game reviews, movie reviews. I'm also like, I'm like famous because I'm from LA. I like know all these people. I stand next to them and then take an Instagram photo and pretend they're my best friend when I hashtag them. And so therefore, you know, I'm like totally, totally, totally famous for my Star Wars video. It has like more than 100,000 views and like people really liked it. So I do movie rants sometimes. So subscribe if you want to see that shit and make sure you do like because that's what all those other cunts say, isn't it? I'm Johnny Massacre. This is the Johnny Massacre Show. See you later.